widespread testing isn't the key to reopening our economy. If we know who has the virus and who doesn't have the virus, it makes it so much easier. What will it take for everyone to get a test? We've had to not just advocate, but fight at more testing kits. And can antibody testing get you back to work sooner? Well, a lot of people like to say you can get an, an immune ticket, right? Or at least give you peace of mind. We're not all 100% accurate, so I'm a little bit nervous about that. Good evening, I'm Mark Ockerblum. And I'm Vanessa Welch. We are all eager to get back to something that looks like normal, and most experts agree testing is what we need to do that safely. With a virus that's so new, testing is how we can figure out where COVID-19 is right now and where it's been. For the next 30 minutes, we are talking to the leaders in this field to find out why widespread coronavirus and antibody testing should matter to all of us as we look ahead to reopening the economy. Late this week, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh announced a new testing push in the city. Our goal in the coming weeks is to reach at least 1,500 tests per day in the city of Boston. Before last week, we were testing less than half that rate. Despite the call for more kits, 25 Investigates reporter Carrie Kavanaugh found right now there are still some doctors who have to tell patients they cannot get tested. So I actually was shocked that they said, no, you don't qualify. Erica Anderson says that's what she was told in March as coronavirus was sweeping across Massachusetts. The Lynn mother of four believes it swept through her family. She says they all had some virus symptoms. Erica says hers were the worst, and for 10 days, she could barely move. Our main concern was that my husband was working at the airport. He's an iron worker, so he was like directly around lots of people coming in and out. But Erica and her husband couldn't get tested. Massachusetts has greatly expanded its coronavirus testing capacity since then, but some say it's still not enough to have a true sense of the rate of coronavirus infection. At this point, it's about three to five patients get rejected per day. Dr. Rafe Medi is a physician in Hanover. He told 25 Investigates he believes more testing means saving lives. There's no finger pointing. It's just there's a lack of. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, from a frontline uh, first responder standpoint, uh, if I don't have a gun, how do I shoot as a soldier? And if I don't have a kit, how do I test people? So then I send them to testing sites. And they have very stringent criteria. The message about needing more tests uh, uh, can't be abandoned. Dr. Thomas Sai, a health policy researcher at Harvard, says test kit supply chain issues, which led to nationwide shortages, have improved. So he believes now's the time for the nation to overhaul its entire testing approach. Now we're at a stage where we can think about uh, opening up an increased number of tests and changing our whole approach to testing so that we're actually casting a much wider net. So I get that theoretically, but practically, are we there? No, we're not quite there yet. Um, and I think the important um, thing to keep in mind is that we still have to make incremental progress. Progress is happening all across the state, including in Somerville, where now the only criteria here is that you're a resident. I don't have any symptom, but just to be quite sure about uh, anything which may be happening. It hasn't been easy. Uh, we've had to not just advocate, but fight or at more testing kits. Somerville Mayor Joseph Curtitoni says Massachusetts DPH gave Somerville 3,500 test kits to start. He says he continues to ask for more. Is it somewhat fruitless, though, for Somerville to do this if Medford isn't and Boston isn't and Cambridge isn't yet? Well, uh, you bring up a good point, and we need to all be doing this, and no community on their own should have to fight for a minimum amount of testing uh, uh, supplies. Uh, we need to be doing it across, at a minimum, the region. The experts we spoke with believe lack of testing is what led to Massachusetts' economic shutdown, a situation no one wants repeated. The reason that we're still shut down is we don't have enough testing. Let's um, make sure that uh, once we do open and when we do open, that we can stay open and not let the lack of tests get in the way of having to shut down again. DPH tells 25 Investigates it's currently focusing its testing resources on hotspots and other hard hit communities like nursing homes and for frontline workers. As of this week, Massachusetts had tested more than 330,000 people. So how do we get to widespread testing for all? Governor Charlie Baker told Boston 25 News it remains the role of the federal government to ramp up testing. For 25 Investigates, I'm Carrie Kavanaugh.
More information on the expanded testing push in Boston now. We put together this map for you to show you where the testing is being offered. And you can see it will be at five hospitals and these 18 health centers all across the city. Last weekend, I had the opportunity to interview Governor Charlie Baker and First Lady Lauren Baker from their home in Swampscott. The governor was animated when talking about how he feels the federal government needs to step up right now when it comes to widespread testing. Governor Baker, you have made it clear that you are happy that the federal government is leaving the reopening to states, but you've also mentioned the government's role in testing and treatment. Where do you feel the government has let the states down? There's only one entity in the United States that can actually really put the foot on the accelerator and make things happen when it comes to testing and treatment, and that's the federal government. And I think in the fourth COVID response bill, uh, there was a significant amount of resource in there for testing and treatment. And, you know, thank God, because, um, because in the long run, even in the medium term, and, and hopefully a little bit in the short term, the federal government's role in amping up our ability to test, identify, and then hopefully at some point uh, put treatment to work is, is paramount. I can't do that. States can't do that. States shouldn't do that. That is the sort of thing that the federal government needs to drive policy on uh, and make investments in and find solutions and answers on. You can find the extended version of our candid conversation with the governor on Boston25news.com. We are turning our focus to antibody testing next. Those tests are easier to find than COVID tests, but what do they really mean? I'm going to actually show you how, how one of these is, is done. A local doctor tests himself for us the results and how similar tests are being used right now in Boston to see how many people were infected and never knew it. And 25 Investigates is digging into the role antibody testing may play in reopening the city of Worcester and beyond. Ahead, the facts and fiction and how those tests may affect your future. Antibody testing has been called the key to reopening the economy, but not everyone is convinced. 25 Investigates' Ted Daniel looks at the tool local governments and employees are using to help decide when to get everyone back to work. We're going to be hearing a lot about antibody testing over the next several months. It is different than coronavirus testing. 25 Investigates is looking at the pros and the cons and the way some local communities plan to use the test results. And I'm on day 54 today of symptoms. There has not been a single day where I haven't had a symptom. Laura Nichols tested positive for coronavirus seven weeks ago. And on Tuesday, 25 Investigates was there when she went to a lab in Brighton for an antibody test. Lauren says she's been dogged by shortness of breath and fatigue for nearly two months. And I'm paying out of pocket for it, um, not going through my insurance for it. And it was just me wanting to be able to have it on file so that I could help people if I'm able to do that. Antibody testing doesn't look for the virus itself. It identifies antibodies or proteins the body creates to fight it off. What we're testing for with the antibody test is do you have something, antibodies, have you been exposed to the virus? This is completely converted into a COVID-19 area. Dr. Eric Dixon is an emergency room physician and the CEO of UMass Memorial Hospital in Worcester. He says antibody testing could be crucial for easing restrictions and returning people to work. He says it's an important complement to coronavirus testing because many carriers aren't aware they have the infection. When you add the antibody testing to that, it'll tell you this is what's going on today. So when you add those two things together, you get a really powerful set of data to understand what's going on with this infection. According to Dr. Dixon, yeah. that information could go a long way to determining which pockets of the population are most susceptible to catching the virus and whether enough herd immunity is present. Herd immunity is collective immunity that could prevent a virus from taking hold in a community. Think of it as um, you're in a forest and you look and there's dry kindling all around you. It's easy to get a big fire going and get something out of control. Every person that tests positive for the antibody, it's like picking up that dry kindling and it's no longer available. A simple blood draw can reveal how far the virus has spread in a community and who can safely go back to work while the virus remains a threat. A person with IgM antibodies is in the early phase of the disease and contagious. A person with IgG antibodies is in the latter stages of the virus and may have some temporary immunity. 
Someone with neither of these antibodies has never been exposed to the coronavirus and is most likely to get infected. An individual in this category, experts say, is the least safe to return to work. Well, we think it's going to be a very important part of figuring out how to reopen our community. Massachusetts' second largest city is turning to antibody testing to determine if it's ready to ease restrictions. We feel that this will be a more accurate way of testing. Dr. Michael Hurst is the medical director for Worcester's Division of Public Health. He says Worcester will likely start by offering antibody testing to city employees in batches or groups. His goal is to also make it available for people who work in factories, construction sites, office buildings, and anywhere else in the private sector. And if that does work, we think we could save a lot of uh, dollars and time in, in getting uh, these workplaces back online. Researchers at MIT, Harvard, Beth Israel, Mass General, and Brigham and Women's are also working to bring antibody testing to the masses in Massachusetts. Unlike coronavirus tests, which can take about a week to get results, antibody test results are available within 48 hours, and production of the test can be quickly ramped up and widely distributed. But they're not perfect. Some of these tests have been known to give false results. Not all 100% accurate. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous about that. Laura Nichols says she would gladly share her antibody test results with any research organization that's interested. Her test, a preview of the millions that could follow. It's beneficial, I think, from more of a, maybe a more of an emotional standpoint, just have something concrete. Last week, the city of Boston announced it will test a thousand residents for antibodies. Governor Baker has shot down the idea of statewide antibody testing. There are dozens of antibody tests on the market right now. So far, only one has FDA approval, and doctors still can't say for sure if a positive antibody test means absolute immunity to reinfection. For 25 Investigates, I'm Ted Daniel. With so much still to be learned about antibody testing, we wanted to know why experts are so excited about it. I sat down with two local doctors on the cutting edge of this. One even tested himself for us on camera. Uh, and I'm going to actually show you how, how one of these is, is done. Dr. Michael Misalek, a pathologist at Newton Wellesley Hospital, offered to test himself for antibodies at the start of our interview. And now we'll wait 10 minutes. We'll show you his results in just a minute. The quick test is the same one used to screen hundreds of people in Bellingham Square in Chelsea last month. Of the asymptomatic people walking down the street, 30% of them had been exposed. Pathology professor Dr. John Iafrady at Mass General was part of that Chelsea antibody study. And he's part of one that's happening right now across the city of Boston. How might this be used to help reopen our economy? Well, a lot of people like to say you could get an, an immune ticket, right? If you're antibody positive, that you should safely be able to return to work. Well, the number of people with tickets is going to be different in different towns. Dr. Iafrady tells me in areas where social distancing has been easier the last few weeks, it's likely there won't be a high percentage of positive antibody tests. That reduces the chances of so-called herd immunity, when the virus can no longer get passed around because so many people in those areas have antibodies. The herd immunity that I think we might see in communities like some in New York and maybe Chelsea is not going to be true for probably most of the communities that have a lower uh, prevalence rate. And both doctors are very clear. A positive antibody test does not necessarily mean you're immune. They just don't have enough information to know that yet because the virus is so new. It's not a, a passport uh, for going back to work, to opening up the economy. It's just one part of the puzzle. If it doesn't equal immunity, then why are we so excited about these antibody tests? It will be uh, absolutely vital in our able to uh, understand what the prevalence of disease is in a community and to be able to uh, uh, predict or uh, see if there are hot spots developing and prevent recurrence of this uh, infection. They're hoping as that information comes in, they'll be able to make better decisions to protect public health until a vaccine is developed. But not all tests are created equal. Dr. Misalek says check with your doctor to make sure any test you take is safe and the lab validated. Why do you like this test as a pathologist? I like this particular finger stick test because it's quick, it's cheap, it's disposable, and it, it can be used uh, in a number of different clinical situations. As for his test results? And in the two 
lanes below that that are labeled G and M, uh, they are both negative. So I do not have antibody. What's your reaction to your results? I was a little bit worried beforehand. I didn't know my status. It gives me some peace of mind that I haven't been exposed at, at this point, and uh, that's, that's important information to know. It sure is. And we should get the results of the Boston antibody test study next week, and we'll stay on top of that for you and keep you posted. Do you have antibodies or not? Is it safe to return to work? I'll talk to a psychologist about coping with testing anxiety just ahead. But first, developing a better test and possibly a vaccine. The groundbreaking medical research being done in Lowell and the big contract researchers just landed for their promising work. The testing is not perfect. A lot of the science behind them is still being developed. Boston 25 Morning News anchor Jean Levanchi has a look at some of the groundbreaking research that's being done in Lowell to build a better test and possibly a vaccine. This building on the UMass Lowell campus is actually open. The workers inside declared essential. A space where we can help uh, startup companies uh, working in life science to access the equipment, the technical expertise, the business expertise that they need uh, in order to move forward. This is the Massachusetts Medical Device Development Center, known as M2D2. For more than a decade, they've been helping launch companies with cutting-edge medical ideas, like Nucleus Probe Technologies, which has created rapid tests of all kinds for dangerous diseases. So we can detect um, important um, high-impact pathogens that cause a lot of uh, uh, death and um, and disease in, in, in within five to, to 30 minutes. CEO Jim McNamara says their focus is now shifted to creating a rapid blood test for coronavirus. For myself, I feel a certain obligation to do what what you know what we can in, in my startup to 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 try to um, address these really important unmet needs. The need is great. Public health experts say wide-scale testing is essential before society can reopen. Testing is going to be such a big part about getting people back to work. If we know who has the virus and who doesn't have the virus, it makes it so much easier than um, if we don't. M2D2, which partners with UMass Medical School in Worcester, is one of five centers now splitting $1.5 billion in a program called Rapid Acceleration of Diagnostics. It's an effort to get good ideas off the ground faster. We want to come up with a vaccine that will protect against not only the current pandemic strain, but future strains as well. Ferristope is one of the 40 startups working in the center right now. They've been developing a universal flu vaccine, but now they're shifting gears. It's been a, a powerful position, really, to be here at M2D2 to enable us to really grow our team, expand it, and network with other folks in the area that are trying to achieve a common goal. Steve Tello, a vice provost at the university, believes the center has a positive effect on the entire community. What we've been able to do is, is help extend the life science center around Boston, Cambridge, up to Lowell. Still ahead on this in-depth special, testing fears are real for a lot of people. We'll have tips to cope with the uncertainty and anxiety linked to your test status. The unknowns involved with testing can leave some people with anxiety. Do you have the virus? Did you have it before? I never know. I sat down with clinical forensic psychologist Dr. John Huber for some insight on coping with those concerns. For people who are eager to get tested and can't get confirmation, what does that do to their psyche? They're so sick. It's like they, they, they hit a wall in a truck. And uh, to not get confirmation for them why they're sick, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. What about the people who thought they were doing everything right and then find through the antibody testing that they were exposed anyway? The thing is, you know, disease and illness finds a way. The good thing is, though, they're creating part of that herd immunity. And that's what we kind of need to slow this thing down, too. So, so they have to think about this in a positive way. We could sit there, oh, my gosh, you know, what did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. The virus is going to find a way. If someone tests negative for antibodies, they may feel like they don't want to go back out into society or they may feel vulnerable at this point, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I understand that fear and I think it's a rational fear and we just have to protect ourselves. For individuals who are like, you know what, I'm not cool with testing. I don't want to do it. 
It may be painful. I'm, I'm kind of afraid of it. What do you say to them? In general, it's not painful. It's just kind of irritating. Take a deep breath. Let the professional help guide that, that swab up in there. It'll be over in a matter of seconds. Think down the road. If you do it now, perhaps that's saving you from any further illness. Absolutely. Dr. Huber said the one thing we can control is taking care of ourselves, washing hands and wearing masks. That can be a positive step for both our mental and our physical health. We hope the last 30 minutes have been helpful for you. And remember, we have a ton of resources on the coronavirus outbreak and unemployment on our website app and on social media. Thanks so much for joining us for this in-depth special on testing. From all of us here at Boston 25 News, we wish you and your family good health.